When's the last time that you inspected the brakes on your RV? Or for that matter, when's the last time you thought about it? Is it getting to be about that time? For us, it's that time. And we not only are going to be replacing the brakes on our fifth wheel, but we're going to be doing a full upgrade as well. So hang tight, we're going to take you through the whole process. So today, not only are we going to be replacing the electric drum brakes that came standard on our fifth wheel, like most manufacturers put on all of their RVs, we're going to be upgrading them to electric over hydraulic disc brakes. And to do that, we've partnered with eTrailer here in Wentzville, Missouri to show you how to do that. So in just a few minutes, we're going to be backing into one of these bays here and we're going to get this process started. We're going to walk you through the whole thing and show you what the standard electric brakes look like as they come off. And as we're going through this process, we'll tell you what the benefits are to upgrading. And maybe you've just never seen what these brakes look like, so you'll get a first-hand look what they look like as we start popping the wheels off. Uh, and be sure and stick around to the end of the video. Uh, we're going to be doing some stop tests before we start this process and show you how far it takes to get this rig stopped with the standard electric drum brakes. And then we're going to show you a, after the process of putting on the new brakes how we've improved that stopping distance. So make sure you stick around for that because I think that's going to be some valuable information. So. Now that we got this thing all up on a lift, the first thing we're going to do is get these tires off, show you guys what the original brakes look like, what it takes to get those off, and talk a little bit about the maintenance of the drum brakes versus the disc brakes. Then we'll show you how the new disc brakes are going to go on. It's a real simple process, and we'll take a look at that and give you a better understanding of how all this works. So for those of you who have never had your wheels off your RV or even know what the drum assembly looks like, this is what you're going to see as soon as you take the wheel off. This is the drum and Brad's going to go ahead and start taking this apart and I'll kind of walk you through what he's doing. All right, so we're going to start. We have our uh, grease cap here and this is just kind of pressed on. So normally a dead blow, you just kind of tap that. And a lot of times you'll get a little edge there. And you can normally knock these off as you are going to be replacing them with your new brakes, but a flat head, you can kind of just work this around and that should come off. So if you can see that, hopefully the camera's picking it up. You've got like a retaining clip there that's going to hold that nut in place and keep it from coming loose while you're traveling. And these also pop off pretty easy here. Uh, you can kind of just put a flat head around it and just kind of pry this off. off. A lot of times these come off pretty easily. So you can see I have an inch and a half socket here and I was just able to do that by hand. And the thing about these electric drum brakes, the thing is you never know what you're going to find when you get this drum off. You could have a whole brake assembly full of grease if a um, seal let loose. So that's one of the disadvantages to this original braking system on an RV. I mean, it's been around since the beginning of time as far as trailers. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, Brad, but in my opinion, um, this is kind of an antiquated system now that RVs are getting heavier and heavier. And that's one of the reasons that I've decided to go to disc brakes is because I just don't feel like I have enough. I don't, th I don't feel like the trailer's doing its part as far as the braking. And I feel like I'm putting a little more stress on my truck brakes than I really need to be. So, so now that he's got the nut off, you're going to see how everything's just going to kind of slide off. And you may have some the bearings, bearings popping out here. Oh, here, you can see this outside part. This will also come with it. Now, we are going to have our wires uh, attached still so we'll be cutting those but you'll see that this mounts up to your axle you have nine sixteenths on this one in particular so we'll get those knocked loose real quick and then this whole assembly should come off as well well so one thing that i've heard a lot of people complain about with the drum brakes is they don't wear evenly no. like one might wear more than the other side which gives you what they call brake fade over time and so if you start noticing that, 
hey, I don't think these brakes are grabbing like they used to. It's time to get the tires off, the hubs off, and, and take a look at them. And brake fade only happens in the heat of the moment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nothing ever happens problem. when it's convenient. <laughs> so at this point, all he's got to do is pull that assembly off of the axle. And there's two wires there, and that's what energizes the magnet. And in our case, we're just going to cut those. And because we're not going to need them, and you'll see as this process goes on, we're going to be replacing electrical with hydraulic. So we no longer need these. Now we have our old assembly off. So as you can see, hopefully you can see it on the camera, this is a magnet right here. Those two wires that come in are connected. And what happens is through your, your brake controller on your vehicle, the harder you press your brakes, the more current it's going to give and it's going to energize this magnet. And what happens is this magnet attaches to this drum and as that's spinning, it's pulling that magnet and it's expanding these shoes. And that's how you get your braking function. So, and you'll see when we put the disc brakes on and how that works, how we're going to get just that much more bite and that much more braking power. So the new kit um, that we're putting on is by D-Max. And you might be asking, how did I decide what brand to go with or, you know, even to do this? We're using D-Max because, quite frankly, I wanted the best. Tina's going to be pulling the, the RV, and that is really what kind of got me off my butt and got this scheduled. So D-Max makes a really high-quality product, so we chose D-Max for our rig. Um, we're using a, a Hydrostar actuator. And then we're using Dexter hardware as far as the brake lines and things like that. So I know I'm going to get questions. How much does this system cost? I really can't quote you because you're going to kind of customize your system to your rig. You're going to choose whatever brand uh, brakes you're going with, what kind of actuator and things like that. The best thing to do is to get on eTrailer's website and you can go right to that category if you're familiar with their website it's really easy to use and you can kind of spec your system out and price it out that way the nice thing about what e-trailer is doing is if you happen to uh, put some parts in that aren't going to match they'll probably catch that and let you know that that's not going to match up um, another nice thing about their website that i really like is you can put in your year make and model of your rv and it'll kind of bring up stuff that'll match that RV. So it's really kind of a, a customized system to, to, to pick your system and build your system for your RV. And here we have our caliper bracket. And the great part is, is you have plenty of options as far as mounting up. Um, so some of the other brakes that I've done, you're really kind of pigeonholed into just 90 degree uh, application. So, you know, you can mount here, mount here, but it, Sometimes it doesn't always play ball and it doesn't work out the way right. you want. You may get clearance issues. Um, so it's really nice to have that adjustability. Also, it's got that right there, rotor side. Pretty, pretty straightforward, so it makes it easy to kind of get everything aligned. So just have these outside tabs kind of facing out here. And that's something that D-Max does that maybe other brands don't do. And that was a contributing factor. One of the contributing factors to choosing this brand for our RV was we had a little more flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, so you see, you can see that I chose the, the hub and the disc assembly. You can also get disc brakes where the hub is separate from the disc and then that bolts on. I just... before we get our caliper in place we'll put our pads and we have our Kevlar pads here um, so again just kind of you know that heavy duty it's it's Kevlar you know and most people are like, oh is it bulletproof it is not it is not <laughs> bulletproof um, but again it's just gonna be a heavy duty um, option as far as pads go so you'll see makes it pretty easy you have these metal dowels here that just kind of slide into place here Rip this slid over 
So you can see it's just like changing disc brakes on an automobile. And when it comes to brake change, so much simpler than the old electric drum brakes because all we're changing on this system are the pads. We're not changing the whole assembly like we would with the drum brakes. Now at this point, we're just I'm gonna snug these down uh, and then we'll take our torque wrench, get those in place. And really all we have to do is get our cap back on and that's really about it. Just repeat for the other axles. And repeat that times three. So that is pretty much step one in what's gonna be a three, no, actually a four step process if you include um, bleeding the brakes as a step. Yep. So that's gonna um, do it for how you assemble, assemble the brake assembly. Um, I'm gonna move on and show you what the actuator is, and the, which is essentially a hydraulic pump is what's gonna um, pressurize the system to apply these brakes. And then after that, it's just running the hydraulic brake lines and then bleeding the lines and we're done. So we'll see you up front and I'll show you what the actuator is and how simple that is to hook up. Okay, the next step in this whole process is pretty much the heart of the system. The actuator, or some people might call this the hydraulic pump. And this is what's gonna actually operate those brakes. Uh, this is good, good for up to 1600 PSI. So the harder that I press that brake pedal in the truck, the more this is gonna wind this pump up and create more pressure and apply those brakes harder. Really simple to hook up. You've got four wires. You've got a blue wire, which is actually your brake control wire, white wire, which is the ground wire, black wire, which is the power, and the yellow wire is for your breakaway. So that's just that simple to hook this pump up as far as the electrical. The biggest thing is probably gonna be deciding where you're gonna mount that. We're gonna mount that right in the front, in front of our batteries, so that it's easy, easily accessible for me as far as fluids and things like that. And then the next step after that is basically to run the hydraulic lines from the pump back to the brakes, Why those off to each wheel, and get those hooked up, and then the last step will be to bleed the brakes. So, Okay, so now that all the brakes are installed, the actuator is installed up front, the last thing to do as far as the install is to get the brake lines run from the actual actuator back to the axles into each wheel. So we started doing that. We ran the uh, brake line out through our, where our gas bottle is and then back and up into our underbelly to keep it protected. Now, keep in mind, your build may be completely different. You may have to sit and plan your routing out for your brake lines a little different than we did. Um, it's gonna all depend on your rig. So we kind of got stalled in the installation of the brake lines because we added a few more products, a few more upgrades once we got here because we had an incident on the road on the way here. We broke a leaf spring. That's the second time we've had an incident with the suspension system in six months. Six months ago, we broke a spring hanger. So what we decided to do while we were here is um, add a few products that'll kind of help prevent that. So the first thing that we did as far as the spring hangers is we added the X-Factor cross members from Moride to kind of beef those up and make sure that there's no undue stress on those hangers while we're turning. The second thing that we did was we added the Alltrek 4000 from Moride to give us four inches of travel to take a little bit of that shock and stress off of those springs and to enhance that, we also added some heavy duty shackles as part of that kit as well. So hopefully that's gonna give us a little peace of mind. We've beefed up the system a little bit, give us a better ride, a smoother ride. So now what we have to do is go ahead and finish running the brake lines, get the system filled with fluid, get it bled just like you would a brake job on a car, get the wheels back on, and then go out and road test this. So um, if there's something that we didn't cover that you really wanted to see, keep in mind, we're trying to keep this YouTube video kind of short. So this is a basic overview of kind of what the process looks like. If you want to see more details as far as what goes into this, there'll be a link down in the description below that'll take you to eTrailer's video that they shot with this project as well. And they go into more detail for you. So if there's little details that you want, you can go ahead and check out that video, but stick around. We're gonna go out and get the stop test done for the after and show you the before and after and see what those results look like. 
Okay, the moment you've been waiting for, the before and after results. But real quick before we get to that, I want to take a moment and just thank all the people over here at eTrailer.com for being so accommodating to us while we were here. This was a four-day project. Normally they can change the brakes out in like a day, but because we were filming everything and then we kind of sprung a couple of extra installs on them when we had an incident on the road getting here. Um, so special thanks for those guys. If you guys ever get in the area where e-trailer is out here in Wentzville, Missouri, be sure and stop in and see if you can get a tour. These people go above and beyond to make our research as customers simple and easy for when we need products to replace parts on our RVs. So special thanks to them. And the second thing, because of time restraints, I'm going to do a second video on just the D-Max brand brakes to show you guys the quality of those brakes, the reasons why we chose those brakes, and the features of those brakes. So be sure and subscribe, hit the bell, and watch for that video if you want to see more specifics about the D-Max brand. Also, watch over on Instagram at Jones Indigo. Tina will have things up um, over there as well when there's going to be a video out, so keep an eye over there as well. So let's get to the test. Obviously, the first test we did was before we started this project. We did a stop test with the original um, electric drum brakes. How we conducted this test was I turned the gain controller on my truck all the way up to 10 as far as it would go. We did this test at 15 miles an hour mostly because we were doing it in e-trailers parking lot. We didn't have a lot of distance, so we felt like 15 miles an hour was a safe um, speed to do that in the parking lot. With just the trailer brakes alone, let's take a look. Here's this clip. This is the before. Now, one thing that I want you guys to take notice of as you watched that video, and you can go back and replay it if you want, that was a really gradual stop. That was just 100% trailer brakes only. I used no truck brakes at all. Um, as soon as Brad dropped his arm, I hit those brakes as far as they would go. And you could see that was just a really gradual stop. There was no aggression to those brakes whatsoever. The total length to get the rig stopped was 117 feet. We did that test twice for both of those different angles and it came out like within inches of each other. So 117 feet is what it took to get it stopped um, with just the original electric drum brakes. So now let's take a look at um, the after and you're going to see a significant difference, which I'm sure you were already expecting. So let's take a look at that. Okay, there you have it. The proof is in the video. You could see how much more aggressive these brakes are, how much quicker I was able to get stopped. 53 feet I got stopped with these brakes. As soon as he hit, as soon as Brad dropped his arm, I hit the brakes and we got it stopped real quick, as you could see. So 53 feet, that's how long my truck and trailer are. So I got it stopped in the length of my rig. Far better, obviously, than the um, electric drum brakes. And you could see I even locked them up. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell to be notified because I am going to put that video out um, in the near future of just the D-Max brakes. There are some new uh, features and products coming from D-Max and hopefully when I get this video done, um, those will be out and I can show you those as well. So spring is coming. I know a lot of you are going to be getting your trailers and your RVs out for the first time. So be sure and check those brakes, get them out, road test them, take a look and see what they are. Be safe on the road, guys. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you on the next one.